Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about our work, Refinable uh, Attack Investigation. This is a, a, a work collaborated with uh, uh, Sang Ho Lee, Evan Downing, William Wang, Mattia Fazini, and Professor uh, Tetsu Kim, uh, Alessandro also, and Wen Ki Lee. So nowadays, that there are more, more and more data breaches happening every day. Uh, we can see that uh, many big companies like Sony, uh, Yahoo, MySpace, and more recently, the, uh, the Equifax and LinkedIn and Experian have been hacked, and uh, the users' uh, private uh, data uh, have, been, have been breached. So uh, according to a public uh, release, the uh, breach level index, uh, nearly uh, over two... 2,000 million uh, data breaches happen every year. So after the data have been breached, so people want to investigate what really happened, what is the source of the, of the attack, what's the impact of, uh, of the attack. So uh, the mainstream attack uh, investigation system use a system call level logs to investigate this. But the question is, is whether this kind of investigation is accurate or not. So let's see a motivating example. So suppose there's a finance manager uses uh, Firefox as a, uh, as the web browser, and unfortunately his browser has been compromised by installing uh, a, uh, a malicious FTP extension. And what this extension does is that is that when when the manager uh, uh, uses the browser, it accesses uh, his file system by uh, by reading. Uh, a bunch of files, and he uh, picks some of the files that he is interested in and exfiltrated or this file or the part or part of the data of this file uh, to to the attacker's controlled host. So during the investigation, the the investigator finds it confusing because only by looking at the system call level logs, he cannot tell that which file A, B, or C, or which part of the file C ha has been uh, exfiltrated. So what, so what he can see is that there are read system calls to file A, B, and C, and there are a bunch of send system calls to the, to the attacker's host. So due to the lack of the, the tracing the user, uh, the user space execution, so this kind of investigation becomes uh, confusing. So we call this uh, the data dependency confusion issue. So this kind of uh, uh, issue also happens um, uh, during the investigation of the impact of the, of the attack. So for example, the manager downloads some of the file uh, from the company's file archive. And during this process, this malicious extension uh, changes part of, the, uh, part of the data of the file. For example, changes this offer price inside this uh, contract file. And and later, this file has been used uh, by the other uh, programs, like some uh, document editors or the, some, some other uh, programs. So the impact of this, uh, 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 of this uh, temper file will be propagated into other files. And during the investigation, it is also hard for the investigator to find out which file is indeed affected. So, so, there, so there's also the data dependency confusion issue here. So without uh, the, the accurate uh, attack investigation, uh, the, uh, the impact of these uh, uh, attacks bec uh, becomes vague. So we categorize and evaluate the, the existing attack uh, investigation systems in the three aspects. So we used accuracy uh, to see whether there's a, a, the data dependency confusion uh, issue. And, uh, and the runtime efficiency to see that how efficient, uh, uh, how much runtime overhead they have, and also the analysis uh, efficiency to see how fast the investigator can can uh, can identify uh, and pin and pinpoint uh, the impact of the attack, and also uh, what kind of uh, data has been exfiltrated. So the first category is the system call level, like the D trace, Protracer, LSM, or the HiFi. So they have really good runtime because they, are, uh, they stay at the system call level and also that they are highly uh, optimized. 
and they also have the good analysis efficiency, but as we have seen, that uh, their accuracy is not uh, good enough. And the second category uses uh, dynamic uh, information flow tracking, or DIFT, or the dynamic taint analysis. So they can go down into the instruction level uh, in the user space execution. For example, the panor panorama or the D-tracker uses this kind of uh, technique. Uh, so their accuracy is really good. However, uh, because the, the, the the expensive instrument, uh, instrumentation, their runtime efficiency is not good. Usually, it's around 10 times to, to 30 times uh, overhead. And also, uh, even, even this is used uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the analysis, it is uh, also too slow. So the third category uses uh, one more technique, the, the recall replay technique, for example, like Arnold. So it decouples the expensive uh, dynamic taint analysis from the runtime of the execution to, to, to the offline during the replay, and then it can achieve the good runtime efficiency. But uh, since that it, it needs to do the extent, it still needs to do the extensive uh, taint analysis, so the analysis efficiency is not good still. So we propose uh, RAIN, which, uh, which, use the, which uses the recall replay technique, and after getting uh, a cost level, system core level uh, uh, data causalities. So we do the graph-based pruning, and then to extract the part of the execution that is related to the attack, and also to pinpoint the part of the execution that really needs diff to, uh, to, uh, to identify its accurate data flow. And, and next, we do the diff in a selective way to minimize the workload of the diff to make the system more practical. So we focus on um, achieving uh, the, ac uh, the high accuracy, the, uh, the efficient runtime, and also that uh, we focus on uh, improving the analysis uh, efficiency hugely. So here's our SRAM model. So uh, our system uh, trusts the operating system. So it tracks the user level uh, attacks only. So if there's a kernel is compromised, we cannot guarantee that. And next, that uh, we, we track the explicit channel, so which means the cover channel or the side channel is out of scope. And also that we record all, all the uh, attacks from their inception so that we rule out the hardware throwing or the OS backdoor. So he here's the architecture of our system. So we do the, uh, so we record uh, the, uh, the execution of the system and we also log the system call level uh, 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 program executions using a customized uh, kernel and also a customized libc to record uh, the data synchronizations between the, uh, uh, the context switch of, of the threads. And these logs are transferred uh, off from the target host to the, to the analysis host. And, uh, and at the analysis host, we first generate a cost level graph and then we use the triggering uh, and the reachability analysis to prune this uh, cost level graph to extract a subgraph that contains all the possible causalities uh, uh, regarding this attack and also uh, to uh, and also pinpoint the part of the execution that needs the diff to identify the, the accurate data flow. And then finally, we do the replay and select diff only on this part of the uh, subgraph and then refine the, the data causality uh, results and then get the accurate results finally. So before I get into the uh, more details, let's have a quick uh, look on the, on, uh, on, on the recall replay technique. So we use the operating system level recall replay system uh, technique which we will record all the non-deterministic input to the program execution, which includes the external inputs, for example, like the, from the sockets, from, from the file inputs, or the, from the randomnesses. And if it is in the, uh, in the case of multi-threaded uh, uh, program, so uh, there's also a non-deterministic uh, input to, to the program uh, from the, from the uh, from the internal IPCs, but we don't track them instead. So we uh, 
So we track through the pthread uh, interface to track the data synchronization uh, points, and then we enforce them during the replay so that we can make sure that the, the, the replay of the, of the execution is faithful. And uh, we do this uh, on every uh, programs running uh, on the system, so we have the ability that during the, during the offline uh, time that we, that we can pick any part, uh, uh, any recorded uh, uh, execution or to replay any part of it so that we can do the diff. So, uh, so first, uh, after we get a system call level log, so we will construct a, a graph to represent uh, the processes, uh, the files and sockets as nodes, and also the events as the causality edges. For example, let's reuse our motivating example. So here we have our, our Firefox uh, browser P1, and it reads from the file, uh, uh, the report uh, dot doc, file, uh, uh, the node B, and also read from the file C, and then later it, is, uh, it sends some of the packets to, the, to, to A, which is the attacker's controlled host. So we represent it in this kind of graph. So, so the question and the motivation of our, of our work is that, that do we really need to uh, uh, do the diff on, the, on the every recorded execution? The answer is no. So we do the extensive uh, prunings to prune the data in the graph uh, based on the trigger analysis. So the triggering uh, 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 points could be from external sources like uh, someone that told you that uh, there's something wrong with this, kind, with this program or with this uh, file, so you, you'd better take a look at them. Or it can be from, uh, from some security policy checking, say uh, something is not uh, uh, going, through your, uh, going through your security policies, so you'd better take a look. So from the, for, from the certain points, we do the, the upstream pruning, which finds out all the possible uh, sources of this uh, 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 of this attack, for example, like all the all the uh, all the possible uh, files that could be exfiltrated, and also that we do the the downstream pruning, which actually finds all the possible impacts of this. Uh, uh, for example, the temper file ha uh, uh, could have, and also that we do a point to point, which means that we give you the two points, for example, two files, and then uh, we. And then we prune the graph and then tell you all the possible co data causality passes between them. And further, that we look, look into the, uh, the execution of the each uh, program it is involved, and then we, and then we, uh, we check the order of, of the inbound and outbound uh, 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 events, and then find out which part is really needs the diff to, uh, to find out the, the accurate uh, data flow. Here's an example based on our running, running example. So uh, from the attacker side, uh, so we know that this is, uh, we have known that this is the attacker's control site. So we do a, uh, an, up, an upstream uh, pruning and then find out that, uh, that P1, the Firefox, is, is involved and the file B and C is involved and further that, uh, uh, that P2 and P3 is involved. So finally, that we, that, that we can see file D, E, and F could have been exfiltrated to the attacker's control site. So we do the diff to find out whether they're really exfiltrated or not. So here's the example of the downstream pruning. So we have identified that, uh, that file A, uh, a contra file, has been uh, uh, tempered. So we do a, a downstream pruning and then find out all the, all the possible impacts it can cause. For example, uh, here that it can co uh, cause the tampering to the file B, C, D, and E. And this is an example of the point-to-point -point pruning. So between the two files, the temper file and, uh, and another file, for example, it's a report file. So we run the upstream um, pruning from the file E and then the downstream uh, pruning from, uh, from the file A and uh, extract all the possible passes in this case, there are two passes, and then we do the diff along these two passes and then find out the, the accurate data flow. So in this case, that the, we save the, uh, 
uh, replay and uh, and the taint analysis on the on the P3, which is uh, uh, which is the some uh, automatic reporting program. So, as I said, that, that there's a so. Uh, we check into the interference situation of the inbound and outbound events during the uh, during every program's execution. So we determine the, interf uh, the interference according to their time order, and uh, there there could only be a data flow between these two uh, inbound and and outbound uh, objects if there there is the interference. So for example, if there's a P2 and uh, at time t1, it writes to, to the file b, and at t2, it, it reads from the file d, and t1 is earlier than the t2. So in this case, there's no interference between the b and d. So we excluded it from the diff because there's no possibility. And here's a positive case, which the, uh, a process p3 reads from, the, uh, from file e, and uh, at time t1, and at time t2, it mmap from the from file of file F, and later it writes to the file C. So in this case, clearly that, that there's a there's an interference uh, from the file, uh, file E F to the file C. So we do so we run the diff during the replay to find out whether there's a real uh, data flow. So next, after we extract uh, the subgraph from the data pruning, so we do the uh, diff in a selective way, which means that uh, we will first we 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 aggregate uh, different uh, uh, passes, in, uh, and then only do the taint analysis on the uh, once for all of these passes. Uh, 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 the uh, refinement, and we also do it, do it in in an order uh, of the upstream, downstream, and the point to point. If we find that in the earlier diff, there's the result has already been active, so we don't do it further along this path. So it also saves lots of uh, the taint analysis workflow. Workload, I'm sorry. So here in the example that we have extracted from, uh, from uh, our upstream uh, pruning, so here that, the, uh, that we find that the, by doing the taint analysis on the, on the P1, there's no data flow from, the, from B to A. So we don't do the taint analysis on the, on the P2 because there, it, there's no possibility that the uh, that D is exfiltrated to A anyway. So, and, and by doing the taint analysis on the P, P3 further, that we find that there's a, there's a data flow from, the, uh, from file F to C and then to file A, uh, and then to the attacker's control site A. So here's our uh, implementation. So we, so we implement uh, RAIN uh, 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 on top of the Arnold, the recording play uh, framework. It is a, and we changed uh, uh, around uh, 2K lines of code, and also that uh, we use uh, uh, the D tracker, which is a, uh, a wrapper of the libdft, and also Titan as the taint engine, and we added uh, about uh, uh, 3.5K lines of code, and also that we do the, uh, so we construct and maintain the, uh, the prominence graph, and uh, do the triggering point and, uh, and pruning, that's about the 7K lines of code. So we evaluate uh, uh, our system in the, four, uh, uh, in the four aspects. So first, that the, uh, it's the runtime performance. Uh, so, and second is that how, how, uh, how accurate our system can, uh, can bring to the, to, uh, to, the, uh, to the attack investigation. And third is our uh, analysis cost compared with the previous naive way. And finally, that uh, we that we take a look at the storage uh, footprint. Uh, so first, that the, the we use the spec CPU uh, 2006 as the benchmark for our runtime uh, overhead. So uh, we achieved the uh, 3.22 percent overhead as the runtime overhead, uh, which is a, ge uh, a geometric mean of uh, of the overhead. And and also that that we uh, that we run the uh, our our uh, system on the Splash Three, which is a well-known uh, multi-threading uh, benchmark, and uh, on a four-core system, and uh, we and uh, we achieved the five point thirty-five percent uh, geometric mean of the over uh, of the runtime overhead. 
And also that because we heavily hook the system calls, uh, both for the logging and also for the uh, recording the non-determinism. Non so uh, we run uh, the, uh, some IO intensive applications, for example, like copying the, uh, a kernel archive and downloading a movie or compiling the libc or the doing some uh, rich uh, uh, Firefox sessions. And uh, our uh, runtime uh, overhead uh, are less than 50% in, in, in all of these IO in, intensive applications. So next, that the, uh, so we run our system and then to test that how well it can uh, res resolve the, the data dependency confusion issues. So uh, uh, we used a red team exercise of the DAPA transparent, uh, transparent computing program and then, to, uh, and then to evaluate our system in this way. So uh, there are several uh, attack uh, scenarios like the screen grab, which steals uh, a screenshot from the user, or it uh, uh, or it uh, captures a memory, uh, 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 sorry, a camera uh, shot from the uh, f from the user, or or capture uh, uh, an audio track from the user, or the or get some network configuration uh, information, and also our motivating example. So we find that before that we do. Uh, uh, we we use the system call level only uh, in, uh, investigation system. Uh, there are a very high number of the data dependency confusion rates, but we almost eliminate these problems except for one case that in the network con, because the taint analysis actually that we find that it involves uh, it involved the the, the control flow uh, based propagation, which uh, uh, causes the over tainting problem. So. This is a long-lasting problem in, for the for the taint analysis, and we still do not uh, uh, eliminate all of them. But the, uh, uh, yeah, but we kind of inherit this limitation. So this is the pruning effectiveness. So compared with the previous system like Arnold, which uh, extensively does the taint analysis, so we reduce the taint workload ex uh, uh, significantly. So uh, on average, that we reduce uh, about 94.2% of the uh, taint analysis uh, overhead, which makes the, the, the accurate uh, attack investigation more practical. So this is the, our storage cost uh, uh, situation. So uh, uh, one of our students in our lab uses uh, uh, our system on his desktop for the daily use, like a, uh, browsing the web, uh, and uh, do some coding uh, work, and uh, so it uh, so it costs about four gigabytes um, st storage overhead uh, per day. Yeah, so that uh, amounts to like 1.5 uh, uh, terabytes per year, which we still think it's uh, affordable nowadays. So the limitation, as I said, that uh, our system needs to tr trust the operating system, so that if you don't have the uh, uh, if your kernel could be compromised, so it needs the kernel integrity protection to ensure that, and also that there is still the over tainting issue. And uh, we are looking to the implementing our system in a hypervised based uh, uh, way so that it can uh, further reduce the attack surface, and also we will try to reduce our storage overhead. So to wrap up, uh, so a ring atops a, a, a multi-level prominence system to facilitate uh, the fine grain analysis that enables the accurate uh, the attack investigation. And we have the, uh, the low runtime overhead, and we significantly uh, improve the analysis cost. Yeah, so this includes my talk, and I will take any questions. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Atul from uh, Singapore University of Technology and Design. Uh, so uh, I didn't get the fact as to uh, how would you confirm information flow uh, based on system calls, like, uh, for example, if a process would read a file mm -hmm. and then write to another file, mm -hmm. how do you confirm that information actually uh, there was a flow between them? So uh, according to the system call level that you can see, there's an inbound uh, uh, read, uh, reading of the file, and then there's the outbound uh, writing to another file, right? So if they, they are, uh, the, uh, the occurrence order uh, confirms that there's an interference between them, 
So there could be a data flow. It all depends on the user, user land uh, program execution, right? So, and then we do the dynamic uh, taint analysis to find out that whether there's really, uh, there's really a, a data flow from the input file to the output file. So that's kind of uh, uh, what we are trying to, uh, uh, trying to uh, accurately identify. Yeah. Okay. So it's basically based on the, the touches. Like, I mean, uh, it could flow, but it is also possible that it cannot flow. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Adam Bates, uh, University of Illinois. Uh, so you mentioned in your threat model that the system's built uh, with the assumption of operating system integrity. So it, aside from the, uh, from the threat model, uh, could, could this be something that you could use to reason about flows in the kernel, or is, is the approach itself not amenable to like, doing the, the information flow analysis at that level? Like if setting aside the, the kernel integrity problem, would you be able to use this to reconstruct traces in the kernel as well, or is it only applicable to user space? Yeah, so, uh, uh, so I think that the, uh, because we heavily use the, uh, the, uh, the hookings inside kernel, like uh, doing the logging and also doing the record replay, so we need to trust kernel. But if you want to get the, the data casualties inside kernel, there's also a whole system uh, uh, taint analysis system like uh, Panorama, because uh, they do uh, on top of uh, QEMU, so they emulate, uh, so uh, uh, through doing the taint analysis on the emulations, they can get every, everything that happened on the, uh, on the system. However, it incurs the huge overhead that is uh, not practical in, in our uh, uh, runtime or the, even in the analysis in many times. 